Hey guys, my name is Bailey. I'm a second year, third grade teacher in Florida, and today I'm doing a Q&A. Hey guys, this is just future Bailey popping in to share the sponsor of today's video, which is Kitcher. Kitcher is a dish rack drying brand, and I am so excited to be working with them on this video. My dishwasher goes back and forth between working and not working, so I catch myself a lot of times having to hand wash dishes, and not having a dish rack is so frustrating because I can only put so many dishes on a little towel on the counter, but with this Kitcher dish drying rack, it has been a total game changer. So a little bit about Kitcher, they are a professional kitchen brand, they specialize in in products to help keep your kitchen neat and organized. They also sell on Amazon as well as have their own website. So you could get it off Amazon or just on their website. And they have a five-star seller rating on Amazon. So you know they are good to go. So some really great features with their dish drying rack is that it's super easy to install. It only took me a couple minutes to get it all set up. It has so many great features. I really love that it has the drain board underneath the entire rack and then a little spout so you can, you know, turn it to where all of the water that comes off of the dishes as they're drying, all that excess water will just go back into your sink, which is so cool. They have little cutlery holders. They have wine glass holders. One thing I know with me is I'm always worried my wine glasses are going to break whenever I put them with other dishes, like if the dishes were to kind of topple over. And so with their dish rack, there's a little separate holder for that. And it comes with little organizers that way. You can set your dishes in there nice and neatly and they're not gonna collapse or fall over on each other. The dish rack is stainless steel and it comes with all different little attachments. So here are some of the attachments. In this photo, you can see the wine glass holder. Then there's also on the side, there's a cup holder where you can hold five cups. And then the main piece, which is the rack body where you can stack plates super neatly and some more cups as well. And then you have the drain board, the cutting board holder and the cutlery holder. So if this is something you might be interested in trying, you can use the discount code Bailey 15% to get 15% off of your order. You can order on Amazon as well, but I recommend going through their website because then you can use that 15% off code. Their website is kitsureus.com, but I hope you guys end up checking it out and enjoy your dish rack as much as I have. Thanks again to Kitcher for sponsoring this video. Let's get back into the Q&A. So a lot of big changes are happening in my life soon so i asked you guys on instagram to ask me some questions about that kind of stuff if you follow me on instagram you probably already know but max and i max is my boyfriend he's not here right now <laughs> we are moving so one of the main questions was where are you moving things to do with moving am i moving schools what's happening so i wanted to address that first because i'm sure that's the main reason why people probably want to watch this is like to know about that whole Thing. So Max is in the Coast Guard, so he's in the military. He has to move every few years. So we knew that this was probably going to happen soon. Originally, we thought we were gonna have to move last summer. Um, so if you guys followed me along in my teaching journey last year, I did like my entire alternative certification process last year because I thought, that originally we thought that we were gonna be moving last summer and I wanted to get all of that done before we, before we moved. So then we found out maybe like halfway into the school year last year that we were actually going to get to stay for another year, which is really exciting because we really like where we live. But we knew it was just going to be like one extra year that we were going to get to stay here and then we were going to be moving this summer. And then for a hot second, we thought Max is going to be going like deploying for a year and I was just going to stay here. So then I would get to be here for another year. So it's just been kind of like up in the air and we haven't really known for sure. That's just kind of how it goes in the military. You just don't know anything until they tell you and then you do it. <laughs> so we did like figure it all out and we will be moving this summer. We're thinking it will probably be like end of May, early June. We haven't gotten like an official date or anything like that, but we are moving. We are moving to the St. Petersburg, Tampa Bay area. I'm so excited to be staying in Florida. That was something else that you guys were asking about as far as like, am I moving schools? Like, what is that gonna look like? Where I teach in Florida right now is like seven hours away from Tampa. So yes, I will be moving schools. I am excited, but very nervous about going through that entire process again. I'm really unfamiliar with that area also, so I don't know like 
the school areas like I know the districts because I've been able to look that up but as far as you know like where I want to teach or anything like that I really don't know I feel like I still have like a good solid month to kind of get my stuff together and figure that out before I really need to like start going in like and interviewing and things like that so I will be moving so there will be a whole brand new costume setup you guys will be following me along as I pack up my classroom that I have right now and us moving to a whole brand new place and me working on all of that school stuff this summer. I'm very excited um, to take you guys along on that entire journey. I really wanna do like moving vlogs and packing and like all that kind of stuff. So hopefully those videos will be coming soon. We have like two months, a little over two months to you know pack and everything so now that I've gotten that out of the way I guess I will go in with some questions I have my laptop right here because if you guys have been following me you know I use my phone to film all of these so I can't just like go on my phone and look at the questions but I screenshotted them and sent them to myself so that I could look at them on here so if I'm looking down that's why I'm looking down but I'm gonna try my best to look at you guys I'm seeing a lot of people saying are you moving schools yes definitely moving schools I'm not gonna be commuting seven hours a day <laughs> to teach over here um, and then another question about like the whole school change a lot of people are asking am I gonna stay in the same grade am I gonna change grades I would love to stay in third grade just because with moving to a new school and things like that and most likely new curriculum I don't know what curriculum what curriculum they use over there um, so with all of those changes I would love to be able to stay in third just because it's what I'm most familiar with I'm comfortable I feel really confident teaching the third grade standards so I feel like staying in third would be my top choice but I am open to maybe fourth fifth maybe second if I had to but I really don't wanna go like any younger than second for sure. And even second's kind of pushing it. It'll really just depend on what is open and what, you know, I find when I start interviewing. I am really nervous about that whole process to do that, all of that over again. But I feel a lot more confident as a teacher now. And I feel like it'll go a lot better than my initial interviews when I first started teaching. Somebody asked how long Max and I have been together. And in June, like, the beginning of June will be three years that we have been together and a few of you guys have asked if we're getting married if we're having kids all those kinds of questions and we want to get married that's the plan we're not engaged or anything like that yet we're not rushing into anything but in due time it will happen somebody asked when did I start applying for teaching jobs initially so with me starting teaching my original plan was to do grad school first and then start teaching but then one day I was like you know what nope I think I just want to I think I just want to do it I just want to full send and just start teaching and I'll do grad school at the same time I was kind of getting in over my head but it worked out so yeah so originally I wasn't planning on teaching in the fall of 2020 which is when I started but it was like the end of June when I was like you know what I think I do want to start teaching this year and I'll just you know do grad school at the same time and so I started applying at the end of June like the second like the last week of June I'm pretty sure is whenever I started submitting applications and a lot of people I feel like uh, like do all of that kind of stuff like April May I feel like it also depends on where you teach at because like in Florida we end school at the end of May and we start school in August whereas some schools they end in June and then they start in September so like the interviewing process could be like the timeline might be different depending on where you're at but as far as like Florida goes I feel like a lot of people like start in April and really into May is when the interviews and all that gets like a lot and then like it can go into the summer if there's positions still available but it gets to kind of slim pickings by then. So I was kind of late in the process of interviewing and things like that because there wasn't, there were still quite a few positions open, but it definitely wasn't a lot. Like I applied for every elementary position in my county and I teach in a very large county and there was like maybe like six or seven positions that I applied for. And then I ended up only interviewing at three and then got hired at one so or I guess I and then accepted one obviously it really just depends like don't be discouraged if it's like June or even July and you haven't 
found a job yet because they definitely can still happen. But for me this year, I plan to start reaching out to schools probably towards like the beginning of April, I think is when a lot of schools start posting their open positions for the following year. So April is really when I'll start looking into that a lot like more heavily. What I plan to do from now until then is to prep my teaching portfolio. I have a whole video on that from like two years ago, not two years ago, a little less like a year and a half ago. Knowing all what my teaching portfolio looked like, I plan to literally start from scratch and do it all over again because I like didn't know anything at that point and now I feel like I am just like a completely different person as far as teaching goes so I plan to completely redo the entire thing so that's gonna be a lot but I'm excited to revamp it I'm planning on watching Michelle Ferre's video on it again just to kind of refresh my memory of like the things I want to include and then I will eventually I'm sure I'll show you guys that maybe like closer to the beginning of the year next school year once I've like used it and it's been successful. <laughs> so we'll see about that. But yeah, I plan to just start prepping that in the next coming weeks and then interviews will start, I'm assuming in like April, May timeline because schools in Florida usually get out by the end of May. So yeah, I've had a lot of people ask, how do you keep your life together? How do you manage your time? How do you just like keep going with all the craziness going on that, yeah. So I feel like, don't just take what you see on social media and be like, oh my gosh, she has her life together because trust me, I don't. Nobody does. If you think they do, they don't. But I will say I am very like type A, like I I do procrastinate sometimes, but also like I like to just, I like to-do lists. I would say to-do list is like my biggest thing ever. I have to-do lists on my computer. I have to-do lists on my, in my planner every day for school. So I will show you what I started doing. Actually on my computer, I bring this computer to school every day. This isn't my school computer, but it's my personal one, but I like to have both. I know it's not really like common, but I, I know a lot of people did it during COVID, but I still love having both computers because my computer screen at school, like I can't free the screen and then do stuff on my computer like whatever's on it and I'm displaying has to stay there so it's really nice to like have a screen that I use to like project stuff for the kids but then also to have a computer to like actually do other things and so I found this little like background on Canva and they have new ones every single month and so I just put it's a March calendar which I always am like trying to reference a calendar when it comes to like dates and planning things so it's nice to just have it right here instead of having to like go through my phone to find a calendar and then it has two boxes one says personal one says work and I use the little sticky app on my computer and I literally will just make to-do lists on here. So I just have, obviously for my personal one, I use that for like YouTube things or just like cleaning the house, like things I need to get done when I get home from work that I don't want to forget. And then the bottom one is obviously work things that I want to get done. I've just found that having a to-do list makes it super simple. You see exactly what you need to do, when you need to do it. Like it just really helps me stay organized. And also just trying my best to not procrastinate as much because I have so many things going on and in order for me to like function, I just cannot procrastinate. Another thing that I've really been enjoying doing is kind of batching my time. So if I have like a afternoon on like a Wednesday, I might batch like three hours where I just like grind out as much grad school work as I can. And I just, that's all I do for those three hours. Or I might pick like a Sunday morning, like pick four hours to just work on YouTube stuff and get as much of that done as I can. But that's, I feel like it's been really helpful because I can just get a whole bunch of stuff done and it's not like little things here and there that I just keep having to do. So that's been really helpful as well. But I don't want you guys thinking that I like have it together at all because I am only 22. I'm a teacher. I'm in grad school. I do YouTube and social media. Like it's a crazy time. But I feel like the social media side of things, it's not really work. It's fun and it's a hobby and I just get to like talk to you guys and things like that. So it, that doesn't really like stress me out. Whereas like school stuff can, but also this year, I do not take schoolwork home unless it's something that I want to do. I do not take it home. Last year, I really struggled with this, but I feel like first year teachers, I don't want to say it's a necessity to take things home because it's not, but for me, I just had to in order to feel like okay going into the next school day, but this year has just been completely different. I'm sure it'll be interesting next year to see how it is since I'll be at a new school and all of that. Somebody asked, how has my classroom management changed between last year 
and this year. And I feel like the main thing is I've really taken control of my room and the kids know that like I am the boss, you are the applesauce, <laughs> honestly. Like last year, my mentor teacher, she really tried to like instill to me that like the kids need to know that like it's your way or the highway. They are gonna respect you. They're gonna do what you say and that's the end all be all. And I feel like last year I was just a little like intimidated or just like worried, I don't know. And so I feel like I didn't really like step up and like, okay, sorry if the camera moved a little bit. My phone just overheated because it's a little hot outside. So I'm gonna try and finish this video up as quickly as I can with just a couple more questions. So somebody said, do you ever feel intimidated when talking to parents? Definitely, and this was way worse last year. I would literally like start to have a panic attack anytime that I had to talk to parents, but it's just something you, you have to do it. And really, they just want to know that you are, just want to know that you are doing everything you can to give their child the best education you can and that you care about them and love on them. And you just have to try to make that clear, even if you're calling them because something is frustrating or something bad is happening just really emphasize the fact that like you are trying to do the best you can with them and I feel like that will really help a lot I last year I struggled with almost trying to be like a little defensive over like you know if they were upset with something and me trying to make these excuses because I didn't want them to be mad at me but it's just like understand that like that is their baby they're just trying to protect their baby and I feel like if you just like emphasize that a lot that will really help I'm not a parent so I feel like I kind of struggle with like relating to them because I don't have my own kids but you know I have my own dogs and I love them a lot and if they went to school you know I want their teacher to take good care of them I don't know I'm just kidding but I feel like it's just something that as you go you get better at it just be very it's just like a relationship communicate 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 a lot the good and the bad and it, you'll be fine. Somebody said, do you ever feel belittled by older teachers because like of how young you are? I feel like I've got, I've experienced this a little bit, but not really that much. You know, I have a degree. I'm about to have a master's degree. I know I haven't been, I haven't had as much experience as they have. And I really appreciate their like experience and their wisdom. Like anyone's gonna experience that in any job that they have. There's gonna be the people that have been there longer that are maybe, a little intimidated by a new person that's younger or something like that but I just honestly shrug it off you know I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do we're not gonna get all dramatic or anything like that you know like it's just kind of one of those things that you just kind of have to shrug off and then the last thing I'm gonna talk about a little bit is budgeting as a teacher everyone knows teachers get paid doggy doo-doo pretty much everywhere and it sucks, but that's just the way it is. You know that going into the profession that you just don't get paid a lot. And of course, I would love to see teachers get paid more. I feel like maybe in the future that could be something that happens, especially with like how things are going. I know in Florida, we have gotten raises. I've, this, this year we did, last year we did. So I feel like there is some progression towards getting teachers more a higher salary but as far as budgeting goes i have been using the mint app this is not sponsored or anything i just downloaded it and i really like it because you can set budgets for yourself you can connect all of your accounts you can connect like your car loan thing like you can c connect your debit card your credit cards it, all of that you can connect it and see like exactly how much money you have and where a lot of your money is going towards and things like that and setting budgets for yourself and I really loved it because it gives me a nice visual of oh like I didn't realize I bought that many things on Amazon this month like and it just really makes you think and I feel like just even seeing just seeing where your money is going is so so important one thing that I've talked about a little bit in my what I spend in a week videos that I've done is really seeing where I can cut things out like I started only going to Starbucks on Fridays or if like I have a gift card then maybe I'll go on a Monday and a Friday but just kind of setting like little rules for that I try to stay at like $60 or less for my grocery bill every week I've cut out like 
subscription services that I don't use. I've been trying to buy less clothing, which is why I like Teacher Style Box. It's also not sponsored by Teacher Style Box either, but it's so nice because you don't want to, I, I hate wearing the same things over and over again. So having a couple new pieces every few weeks come from Teacher Style Box is really nice because you can throw in something new into your wardrobe, but you're not having to pay like you're not buying all these new clothes all the time. But yeah, it's something that's really hard and trust me, I am not the best at it. I still probably spend too much money like going out to eat or going to Chick-fil-A, things like that. Um, but I feel like just being more aware of where your money is going really helps because you can see exactly where the problems are and start to make little goals to help fix those little problems. Okay, I ended up driving to Publix because I have to go in there anyways and my phone kept overheating. But that is going to be it for this video today because my phone will not stop overheating this Florida sun. But I hope you guys enjoyed this little Q&A. If there are any questions I didn't get to answer, you can just put them in the comments below and I will try to get back to you guys. But I hope you're having an amazing day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.